Smith asked. Yay. Now we have to jump up in these chairs because they are they are made for short people. <laughs> I told everyone we were just going to get right into the kind of wonderful conversations with you, so let's go. Right. Oh, we're going right, right into the Q&A. Pick, okay. pick right or left. Let's All right. Which one? Which side do you want to start? Uh, let's go left. Left. Left to right. Yeah. All the girls, they're so sweet. Oh. Hi. What are your names? Uh, I'm Chloe, and so my question was, what was your favorite thing we cast? Okay, um, that's a tough question because I, I love most of the characters that I've had to do. Uh, I mean, my forever love will be Mulan. is just my dream as a kid to be in a Star Wars project. Um, I can't get enough of playing her. I miss being her. I love it when I see people cosplay her. Um, it's it's like just the you know it's like the shiny new toy right now for me. I can disagree. Star Wars is also awesome. Yes. Yes, just a little bit. <laughs> no, a lot bit. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank you. Jen, over to the right, yes, sir. All right. Um, big fan, aspiring stalker. But... Uh, security? Right there. I got you. I got a line of sight. Rudy, take care. So, hypothetical question. I'm in a dark alley. I have way too much cash in my pocket. Of the... Of Where the, is this going and what is your name? Of the three big characters you play, which main do I want to have? What? You've got children in this room! <laughs> Who do I want to have covering my back, or do I just wait for Phil Coulson? Oh! Well, you know, that's your type. He <laughs> <laughs> built you in and then came in with a zinger. Well, I guess it depends on the situation, right? Fennec being a mercenary would probably take your money yeah. and leave you stranded. Uh, so I would say uh, May would probably definitely help you a lot more. So I go with I, I go with the cavalry. And why are you in the dark alley with money? Really fascinated by this story. Yes, other sister. There's so many of them too. Um, I think I really, really love uh, the finale because it was the first time, like Mulan was always doing everything from her heart without any expectation, any reward. She wasn't seeking for self-glory. She, you know, and, and when it all culminated, um, into the entire um, audience of, you know, the, of China bowing down to her um, as a way to thank her for saving China and uh, giving her that respect. Um, and then ultimately, it wasn't even that. Like, that wasn't what she was just surprised by. It. All she wanted to do was go home and um, let her parents know that she was okay basically. And, and it's that sense of who she is. Even though she always felt like she didn't know who she was, but in the end, she always did. And I, I just think that was one of my favorite parts because it's such a great way for us all to learn to be. You know, just loving us for who we are and trusting that that is enough. Really heavy answer for a seven-year-old. Huh? <laughs> I love what she meant, Mushu. <laughs> very relatable. There we go. <laughs> right. 
Hello. Oh my lord, how did you just... Um, you can just call me Ming. <laughs> okay. Um, I asked the voice actor of the Zukumi Guria this earlier. This is going to be a very stupid question, but if you can interpret this any way you want. Are fireworks flat or circle? Is this like a cereal soup? <laughs> no, like fireworks, like kaboom fireworks. I have had mixed reactions with this completely. Is it flat so. or circular? I think it shoots up flat, but it falls back down in circles. All right, Woo! that's all. So it's, it's, it's both. Thank you. <laughs> Can't be wrong with that question. That answer is science. I mean, is this, are you the third and last and final sister? Yes. Yes. <laughs> My question is, who is your favorite co-actor that you worked with? Oh. That would be like me asking your parents who their favorite daughter is. <laughs> Unless you have an answer. Do you? <laughs> She's thinking about it. Are you mom behind her? No. question to ask, but um, I have to say, Tim Huera Morrison is pretty cool. He plays Boba Fett, and uh, he's one of the most unique, lovable human beings I have ever had the fortune to get to know, become friends with, as well as uh, act with. Thank you. She came in with a hard question. She did, and she didn't answer my question. Who's the favorite daughter? The right dad's right there. I gave you all those lanyards earlier, now you got a PBI. <laughs> See we're the right yes, sir. Hi. So Hi. I'm going to throw it back almost 30 years and just ask you, uh, you got to share some really great scenes with Raul Julia, who was a really wonderful actor. Yes, and indeed. Just, indeed. And I just wanted to let, you know, let us know what he was like to work with. He, again, sort of like a Tam, just such a genuine, um, talented, passionate person and just so full of life, you know? He, he relished life, he relished his job, and more importantly, he loved his children. And he did Street Fighter purely because his kids loved the game so much. And, uh, and knowing that he was not well, um, that was sort of like, you know, one of the last things that he wanted to give to them. And, uh, and he never, ever complained, never, ever told us that he was sick. We, you know, we sort of knew just from the way he was looking, but uh, truly uh, an incredible human being. Thank you very much. 
Thank you for telling me. Hello, oh, Miss so How are you? Hey, good. How are you? Doing well. Um, my question was a little more serious. Uh, Disney has been doing a good job lately with Asian, rep Asian representation with like, projects of like Raya, uh, Turning Red, and other things. Where do you think we can go from there? Oh, I mean, there's always room to go up and out, you know, and expand and be able to include us all, not just in very Asian specific stories, but just in the general storytelling of any situation. You know, I think that's when we've really reached a level of uh, uh, immersion, diversity, uh, inclusion, you know, all those click words that, that mean something to all of us. And uh, I mean, you know, just looking at this audience here, there, there is that need to just be able to accept people and, and have us all be part of the world and the story. So it could definitely move out of just being Asian specific. Thank you. I'd just like to say my mother absolutely loves Mulan, my little brother loves Book of Boba Fett. And I just want to ask, what made you want to pursue a career in acting? Um, it's, it's weird because my mother never encouraged me. You know, I, I grew up with a, a single mom uh, for a while before she met my stepfather and got remarried. And, um, for her, you know, definitely getting into the arts was not the, it was a taboo thing to do. But at the same time, she went to this fortune teller in Hong Kong before she came to the States. And I think I was about four or five. And the fortune teller looked at my mom and said, after he, after, uh, he saw me and said, oh, your daughter is going to be an actor. And my mom just like, was got, she got really pissed. <laughs> She's like, what do you mean? That's an insult. She's not going to go into that profession. <laughs> guess that fortune teller was right. And uh, I don't know, I guess it was always in the stars. And I've always loved, loved being in front of an audience, loved having that connection, loved being some other people and trying to understand what makes them click. So. always like thought about wanting to be an actor. Wow, oh, okay. And how many of you had your parents also say no? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> well, I mean, clearly they just need to go find that fortune teller. Exactly, exactly. They know what's up. Hi, first off, I just wanted to start off. Thank you for being you. A huge inspiration to me as a child. Mulan came out like a year before I was born, and that really shaped my life. And then seeing the Nations of Shield, and then the Mandalorian, and the book that literally shaped my life and how I view myself. My question is, what line, if any, do you find the best out of an improvised situation? So it wasn't scripted. What improvised line, if any, that you had was your favorite? That's a great question. <laughs> um, my favorite line. Oh boy. It wasn't, it was scripted, but it came um, from me. The idea of that moment. And, um, and I'm quite proud of it because it was something that, uh, really has had an incredible impact. And that's when Agent May, who for the entire seven seasons of, um, of the show, hated her nickname, the Cavalry, because it was associated with the pain of having to kill a young uh, inhuman in order to save uh, a lot of people. And if I spoil that for you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go watch it, it's 
streaming on Disney Plus. <laughs> um, but um, what happened is, uh, as we were getting closer and closer to the season finale of our last uh, year, I, I approached the producers and I said, you know, it would be so wonderful if at this point May has gone through so much that she's learned to accept that the good and the bad in her life is her history and that she should be accepting also of that nickname because that is who she is and empower herself as opposed to feel this, you know, this injury. Um, and, uh, and they love the idea. So in the final, uh, the last episode, she comes crashing down from the ceiling after um, the bad guy said, you know, what, what's next or what comes next? And then I do a heroic pose and I go, the cavalry. Uh, yeah, so that was like one of my absolute favorite moments. Um, thank you. But you know, I do have to say, people still spell cavalry wrong. <laughs> they still call it Calvary. So I'll give you a little lesson. No, there is. Calvary, C-A-L-V-A-R-Y, is actually um, related to religion and church, and so it's, it's, it's cavalry. Like, you know, when the cavalry is coming to, so it's C-A-V-A-L-R-Y. That's all. <laughs> She knows better than all of us. I think I've spelled it wrong. Unfortunately, not when I advertised to be here. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi. My name. My name is Jordan. And is Jordan? Yes. Hi, Jordan. I love your work. All just pretty much all of it, and you're just really great. And can I ask two questions? Okay. First of all, is there a, 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 a part in your, that you ever just regret doing, you just hated the show <laughs> or movie, that you just, like, I got money for this, but man, it was so bad. That's a good question. Every time. This is, this is this is televised, isn't it? <laughs> and if you could choose a, a, a show, just like anything for Disney Plus, doesn't have to be Star Wars, just something different. Like what would it be? Second question. I I'll answer the second question first, and I'll have to think about if I can answer the first question without insulting people. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I'm recently in the second season of Hacks. I don't know how many of you watched that on HBO. With Jean Smart, oh my gosh, Jean Smart, let's give it up for Jean Smart! How amazing is she? Talk about inspirational. Um, and Hannah, and uh, all of them, Paul, they're, they're an incredible um, bunch. But um, I love doing stuff like that. I love doing comedy. I love doing characters that are on Earth, <laughs> which I haven't been doing much of uh, recently. But, I, you know, just, I, I would love to do more, more of a, um, that kind of stuff. Just really fun, witty dialogue. I love Succession. Oh, I love Succession. So I would just love like to do some meaty roles like that. And um, you know, that's that's one. And the other answer is Super Cyclone. <laughs> no, I actually love Street Fighter. It's so campy. No, Super Cyclone was this sort of like, um, gosh, I gotta, I gotta make my SAG minimum <laughs> one of those years so I could keep my insurance. And uh, and it was like one of those movies that it's the same people that make Sharknado who are fans of Sharknado. So I'm like, okay, you know, it's 
like one of those like silly kind of movies. It's not that bad. Um, <clears throat> but then my girlfriend was like, oh, don't worry, nobody's gonna see it. <laughs> Well, lo and behold, like Sci-Fi Channel picked it up, and it was in Redbox. It was like everywhere. It's like a little cult classic now. Is it? A little bit. Oh my! Sharknado is too. Like it's Sharknado. I love Sharknado. Following. Yeah, yeah. So, and my mother, like I have done, you know, all this other stuff, right? ER, uh, Joy Luck Club. You know, not to drop my resume or anything, but. She called me about. She's like, Mina, Mina, I turn on TV, I see you. I said, okay. I said, and what? She's like, movie, uh, uh, hurricane. And I was like, uh, you're watching Super Cyclo? She's like, yeah, very good. Very good movie. You movie star. Shorter answers. We'll do speed dating on the Q and A's here. Uh, hello, my Hi. name is Anthony, and I remember watching the TV documentary when Star Wars ruled the world. And if I remember correctly, you were listed as a super fan. So I wanted to know how it feels going from that documentary to now playing in Mandalorian and even being animated in the Bad Batch. That's right. It's uh, it's ridiculous. It's sort of I still pinch myself. I. Um, it's, it's a remarkable, life-altering experience, you know? Like, I feel like I'm living in the upside down sometimes, but like the good one. Uh, and where, you know, you can eat donuts and cake and never get an, an ounce. And it's just, it's just the best of the best. And, and I have amazing, um, you know, bosses. John Favreau, Dave Filoni are the truly one Robert Rodriguez, they, they are the, like the gems of creative minds, uh, of being geniuses, and yet so down to earth and so generous. I, I really feel like, it, I, I don't know, I, I don't know, I, 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 I'm just really the luckiest girl in the world. Does, does that say a lot? Of, like, is my nerd coming out? Is that, Thank you. Female characters, yeah. Thank you. Um, I identified a lot with her, you know, especially at a young age, because I don't want to settle down. And um, I just want to know, did you have any um, experience, or because I know some of the boys have, you know, or most of them before you know, but I was one, just wanted to know what it was like when I was working with uh, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> I've never met Eddie Murphy. Oh, really? I was hoping that he would come to the premiere. He didn't even come to the premiere. <laughs> yeah. So to this day, I still have never met, not even in like a party situation, because I don't think he's very social. And uh, yeah, I have never, I'm a massive fan of his, but you know, yeah, I've never met him. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hi. I'm in a uh, modern family, and my sister and brother are Korean and they're Asian, and I just want to say that it's great to see the people that over siblings represented you that are very positive role models to set the stereotypical, you know, from back like the uh, from the different 80s. Of, um, it's just great to be able to see you in as good as just, you know, badass. And, <laughs> and just a quick question. I want to see. Did you take anything for the book that I said? <laughs> Next question. Jawas, I wanted to take, you know, I wanted to take everything, um, but I was too scared. Maybe, maybe the next go around. But, um, yeah. You can say really late, you're in there, and it's two ways. I, I know. Part of the series, there's nothing they can do. I know, but I think they have cameras everywhere. <laughs> I swear. 
but um, I did steal a, a few Mandalorian coins. Some credits. So, that, that's about it. Hi! Hey, what's up, buddy? Nice to meet you all today. How are you? Nice. Nice to meet you, uh, too. So, my name is Larry B. But I named my son Bruce after Bruce Wayne. He had that his first name. Uh, oh, yeah. And he's non verbal on the spectrum, but he knows how to pronounce, or he knows how to say Mulan. So, he's a fan of Mulan for sure. No way! That's amazing! Yes. Uh, wow. You. So, the question I have for you is um, I have three boys. I named Bruce after Bruce Wayne. Uh, I didn't have any daughters, so otherwise I would name him Mulan and Fanny could be me and Charlie. But if you had, uh, I know you have Cooper and Michaela. Mm -hmm. right? If you had to name your child after a superhero or a character, what would that name be and why? Um, woo. You could have a first and a middle name, so really you have two. Yeah, that yeah. Helps. I oh, gosh. A superhero name. Yeah, you said you're a nerd, so I would assume you have to name. You know what? Actually, with my son, I did want to name him Luke. There you go. And my son, my, my non geek husband, said no way in hell. <laughs> we almost named our first Luke as well, so. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely, like, Leia was the other name for our daughter. And then, and then for our dog. I wanted to name him Chewy. I also got Nick's name on that one. I'm very I need a new family. This all sounds like great ideas to me. Right? Yeah, like, I got to name my dog Bernie after me. That's the bee. Not the president of the bee. Yeah, Bernie. So yeah. That's so cool. That's a good question. Thank you. We have time for one more. So hey, no pressure, but make it really good. Hey, me. Um, I love to read books. What book recommendations do you have for us? Uh, well, I mean, if you haven't read The Joy Luck Club, you should. It's a great book. Um, what is something else? Oh, I'm coming out with a cookbook. So hopefully in a year and a half. So that'll be a good read. Uh, I'm very excited about it. And I have my new kitchen in a week. I can't wait. If you follow me on Instagram, you know. It's been a year and a half of being in remodeling phase of my house. But I'm finally going to get a new kitchen. So, will you be at your table after this? Huh? For a little bit? I will be at okay. my table for until the place closes. Nine o'clock. And if you have a question and you don't want us wait in line, you can come over and ask someone that you were waiting in line to ask your question and we didn't get to you. Okay? Thank you guys so much.